here. I'm Helen. I'm an education writer and a maker, and today I'm going to show you how to make one of these. My robot unicorn with 3D printed horn. After we've made it, I'm going to show you how to code it with a micro bit. So, let's get making. First of all, we're going to make the head and the body of our robot unicorn. Take this piece of plastic and fold it along the score lines. This is going to make our robot unicorn head. For each of the flaps, you'll need to cut off a piece of the double-sided sticky back plastic. This will hold it all together. Put the plastic in place and start to construct the head. You may wish to use some sellotape to give it a little bit of extra rigidity. Here's one I made earlier. You can see I filled it with copper tape, but you can use what you like. Jelly beans, tinsel, it's up to you. The next thing we're doing is putting on the horn. We're going to use another piece of sticky back plastic to put it securely in place so it doesn't fall off while you're driving it around. Next, we're going to construct the body out of two parts. First of all, let's do the bottom bit, the chassis. We're going to fold along the scores like before, and again, we're going to use the double sided sticky back plastic to secure it in place, like so. The final piece of the body is the lid. And again, we're going to fold along the scores and use sticky back plastic to secure it in place. Pop it on the top, make sure it fits nice and snugly, and we're ready to put the head on. We're going to use a little bit more sticky back plastic to firmly place the head on top of the body, like so. Finally, we're going to make the tail. I've given you enough tinsel to try a couple of different interchangeable tail styles. Here, I've made a high ponytail by winding a piece of tinsel around the edge so the tail sticks up. But you can try plaiting it or any kind of hairstyle that you like. The only guideline I give you is to make sure it's not too long so it doesn't get caught underneath the wheels. That's it for step one. Let's move on to step two, putting on the wheels. Now we're adding in the wheels to our robot unicorn. So take the lid and the head off of the bottom of the body and prepare your wheels. The stretchy rubbery bit of the wheels will go over the edge of the plastic inner bit of the wheels. Next, we're going to put the caster wheel on the bottom of our body. So turn it over and you can line up the caster holes with the holes on the bottom of the chassis. You're going to need your little nuts and bolts for this one. You should have four of each in the pack. Pop them through from the bottom to the top and secure it in place. like so. There are four of them, so put them all in place before moving on to the next step. Now take a look at your servos. You'll notice that there's a sticker on one side and no sticker on the other. Flip your chassis over and stick your sticky pads on the inside right by where the holes are. We're going to put these servos through that little hole with the white blob facing outwards. That's what the wheel attaches to, like so. The servo on the left hand side, as you look towards the front of the unicorn, should have the sticker facing upwards. The servo on the right hand side should have the sticker facing down. Make sure they're pressed in nice and securely. Finally, 
use the last remaining screws to put your wheels in place. Now be careful here, you don't want to damage the servos when you're putting them in. Now it's a good time to make sure everything's in nice and secure and on straight. That's it for the wheels. Now it's time to move on to the wiring. Wiring up a unicorn might sound daunting, but actually it's just a little bit fiddly. For this section, you'll also need a little bit of electrical tape and some wire strippers. You can find both at any ordinary hardware store. So, let's begin. Take the lead of the servo and cut it about in half. Do the same for the other one. Discard the end. Now, take the wires coming out of the servo and pull them apart gently until you have three individual wires. Strip the ends of the wire so there's a little bit of bare wire showing through, maybe half a centimetre to a centimetre long. Once you've separated and stripped each of the six servo wires, it's time to add in the battery pack. Make sure there are no batteries in the pack before you put it in. You should never work with electricity when it's live. Now, take the red wires from each servo and the red wire from the battery pack and twist them all together using your fingertips. I did the servo wires first and then wrapped the wire from the battery around both of those red wires from the servos. This creates a nice secure connection. These red wires are the power wires. Next, we'll be twisting together the ground wires from the servo and from the battery. Again, I did the servos first, the two brown wires, and then wrapped the black wire from the battery pack around those two, nice and securely. Next, we're going to use these bigger wires, called crocodile clips, to connect the micro bit with the servos and the battery. Take one of the crocodile clips, it doesn't matter what colour, they all do the same thing, and attach it to ground. Those were the brown and black wires that we twisted together earlier. Then take the other end of that crocodile clip and attach it to the ground part of the micro bit. Next, we're going to take the orange cable coming out of the servo on the left, that's the one with a sticker on the top, and we're going to attach it to a crocodile clip. The other end of that crocodile clip should go on pin zero, like so. Finally, we're going to take the orange wire from the right hand servo, that's the one with the sticker facing down, and attach the final crocodile clip. This crocodile clip should be attached to pin number one. And there you have it. Your wiring is complete. That wasn't so hard, was it? The last thing we've got left to do is make sure that our wiring is safe and secure. In order to do that, we're going to use a piece of electrical tape for each connection. This makes sure that the wires don't touch and short each other out. We're going to cut a small section and use it to wrap up all of the red wires together so that none of the bare wires are showing anymore. Just like that. Now we're going to do the same for all of the other places where there are bare wires. Here I'm just tidying up the ground. That's the brown and black wires. Finally, I'm just going to cut two more pieces of electrical tape. 
and then use them to tidy up the orange cables and make sure they're securely fastened. And there you have it. Your wiring is finished and ready for action. All we have to do now to prepare our microbit unicorn for driving around is to pop in the batteries. These are going to power your servos. So when you're ready to use them, make sure that your battery pack is on the on position. When you're not using your robot unicorn, you want to turn your batteries off to preserve power. Finally, just tidy your wires away, making sure not to disturb them too much as you put them inside your chassis. Double check that the crocodile clips are in the right position on your microbit. All right, you finished your robot unicorn. In the next video, I'll show you how to use the microbit to code it.